Well, hey friends, it's snowing outside. So we are down in the dungeon, which is the basement where we do all the seed starting because I haven't shown you any seed starting this year. And I thought we could uh, touch base on a couple of things that are happening sort of indoors wise and some of the things that um, I've been sowing and I'm going to sow today. It is March 25th when I am filming this. Our last frost date is May 10. So we're starting to get to that period where like all the seeds want to be started. So um, the first thing uh, I'm gonna start just because it's sitting here and I might as well uh, handle that is Gomphocarpus. So Gomphocarpus is a tropical milkweed. I think it's actually now Asclepes Gomphocarpus, Physocarpus. Uh, you will know it as the family jewels plant. Um, it is, even though it's a little bit funny and I do like it for its shock value, it's actually, I think, a really cool plant it, to have in the garden. Um, and so what I have done is you yeah, soak the seeds for this one. So I have them here. They've been soaking since last night. And I'm actually going to just put them all in this little pot right here. Um, this is actually, I think this was part of a toolbox or something. I just drilled some holes in the bottom of it and I thought it would actually make a really good pot. And this is what I've been doing more and more this year, which is sowing seeds into like sort of multi-sowing seeds and then going back and um, digging them out, pricking them out is actually the right term for it. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do here. I have 10 seeds and I'm just gonna try to evenly space them across the surface because I'd really like 10 plants if we're lucky here. Um, one of the reasons why I like doing it this way is that it really saves on a lot of space on the heat mats. Um, and honestly, if, if I don't have, I mean, sometimes it takes a really long time for some of these seeds to germinate. So that's a lot of room it's taking up. And during that time, I might actually be able to move other seeds. You know, pretty soon we're getting to a point where some of those seeds will be able to be moved out of there. So anytime I can save a little bit of space under lights, I feel like it's an effort worth doing um, just because it just helps from a, from a, from a management standpoint. And really that's my biggest issue down here is not having enough space. I have two racks. I'm not adding any more. I do not want more real estate used for seed starting. So that is what it is. So I had pre-moistened seed mix in here. I actually put a little bit of regular potting mix in the bottom and a little bit of seed mix on top of that. And I believe these are one that needs light to germinate. So just a little bit of vermiculite on top and I will just stick this uh, on the heat mat under lights, under a humidity dome, and that's done. Now, the next thing that I'm doing down here is actually not related to seeds. It's related to this plant. And this is one of those things that happened probably in January. So this is Metanilla um, myriantha, also known as Malaysian orchid. And I first saw this plant at uh, Chanticleer Gardens in Pennsylvania uh, when I was there in 2019. And um, it was huge. It was an enormous pot. And of course they have greenhouses that they overwinter this stuff in. Beautiful panicles of these pink flowers. And I had always really liked, I really love the pattern on the leaves here. These sort of almost thick striped leaves. And I saw it again on a video, uh, one of Summer Rain Oaks videos. She was in a garden and they had it. And I thought, I really should try to find that plant. And I found it at Logies and I ordered it. And then I forgot about it and it just showed up. Now, my, uh, so this is one of these things and it, it wants, you know, very light soil, but it wants consistent moisture, it wants humidity, all the things that are hard to give a house plant. So we'll see. This is the pot that this is going to go in eventually. But that's quite big, especially for a plant that doesn't want to be wet. So I'm actually going to just transplant it into this little guy, which is only a little bit bigger than what it's in right now for the time being while it gets settled in rather than potentially get it too wet. And what we're gonna use is a mixture of orchid and cactus mix, uh, probably more orchid mix than cactus mix, but um, the orchid, this, the Espoma orchid mix is, is really barky. Like they're all a little different. This one is just basically mostly bark. So I'm gonna actually mix it because the cactus mix actually is got a 
you know, a little bit um, less texture or more texture in it. Less texture, it's a little bit finer. Just a little bit in the bottom. Uh, this hose attachment, by the way, um, this is the dog bathtub that also serves as the plant bathtub. Uh, and so this is a little shampoo mixer, but I have it set on all water right now. So there might still be a little shampoo in there, but there's no water running through that. All right, we're just going to let this guy drain a little bit. Okay, the next thing we're going to deal with is it's time to pot up these little snapdragons. Now, these are growing in tiny little cells. I pulled this one out earlier. And uh, you can see they've got roots starting to circle at the bottom. So we're going to move these cells on. And I'm going to grow them in this tray. These are uh, like three inch deep cells. I've got some like landscape plugs in these at some point. So I save that tray and we're going to pot them up in here these are one of the first things that's going to get planted in the garden so um, and they'll get planted all at the same time so we're going to just move them on to this tray to grow them on a bit here i got this funny little tool to pop these out specifically designed for this tray let's see how it works oh well that was some it definitely popped so this is Madame Butterfly Red. I think all these, except for one, are Madame Butterfly varieties, which have just performed so well for me. I think they're pretty to look at uh, in the garden, and they also are just absolutely excellent cut flowers. So that's all I need. Okay. All right. There's those. This next one is Madame Butterfly Ivory. I did thin these oh, about a week ago or so. If you saw my uh, shorts video on YouTube, uh, this is what I was thinning. Now a couple of these have little guys at the bottom that I should probably pinch out as well. The nice thing about this popper tool is that the holes in the bottom of this tray are smaller than your finger, so it's hard to just do it by sticking your finger in there. Next up is one of my favorites. This is Madame Butterfly Bronze with White. So you can see the roots on these. I think they're just sort of starting to think about circling. So I think this is exactly the right time to be potting these on. Because otherwise, you have to. I would have to go in there and kind of untangle those roots a little bit. But I, I don't feel the need to do that with this. Okay, now we've got just Madame Butterfly Bronze, just plain bronze. Oh, this is going to work perfectly. Because I only have three of the very last variety, which is not a Madame Butterfly. It is Double Shot. Uh, it's a one that I was sent as an AAS winner, double shot orange bicolor, but only, I only have three cells of those and I planted six. I don't think it was probably bad germination because several of the cells had lots of seeds in them. I think it's just, that's just how that worked. Okay, there we go. Tray of snapdragons, done. Now for this one, I'm gonna water it from the bottom and I do have a solid tray in the bottom with no holes so i'm just going to fill that up with water and let that soak up so you have seen this area before these are my two rolling racks they are wrapped in mylar fabric 
Um, I can link all that again. I've linked all that stuff in other videos, but I can link that again just in case you're looking for it. And not every shelf is being used at this time because we're early on in this process. And what I do is I roll them together to maximize the light that's in there. I have the lights set on a timer for 16 hours a day. I have my one little fan, but I just move it around from shelf to shelf. I don't feel like they need constant blowing. So every day I just rotate the fan around. So we can start on the top and work our way down. And no one is going to say anything about my basically dead kumquat because we don't need to talk about the fact that I've killed every citrus plant I've ever tried to grow and apparently including this one. All right. Up here on the top, this top row is kind of a mixture. So over here, I've got a small heat mat, um, but this is one of the heat mat areas that uh, is for things that need light while they're germinating. So we've got the gonfo carpus in there right away, and I've just stuck that straight on the heat mat with a dome over the top. Back here is snail vine. I planted two. Only one has come up so far. I don't know if the other one will. All four of these are Brazilian tree ferns. Only one has germinated and it hasn't done anything since it germinated. So I wouldn't say things are going great there. Uh, right here is, this is Verbena vanity. And on this side is Verbena bampton, which requires darkness to germinate. So I'm trying to keep it dark. And so I have that one half on the heat mat and half off. Uh, these little guys are so tiny that they don't need to go anywhere anytime soon. Uh, these are peppers and begonias that I started. I wrote a blog post about these. I don't know if I can get you in here close enough to see. I mean, that is, oops, that is the size of those little begonias. They're so tiny. So I have to um, thin out the peppers. The peppers sprouted so well. No problems there whatsoever. Uh, here we've got some cuttings that I'm growing. This is the lavender that I grow outside um, called, it's a Spanish lavender whose name I can't remember off the top of my head. I quite like it. I never see it in stores, so I do take cuttings of this. So I cut those in fall, and I grew them all in a pot, and I just recently potted them up. I've just stuck these guys. I've been bottom watering them, so I just stuck them in here to get some bottom water. I'm also trying to propagate uh, that Senecio skyscraper. So we've got some cuttings of that. And under here, I've got some cuttings of um, a little pilea and a geranium. This is sort of a general propagation area there. Down on the next row, we've got these are, this is the parsley, and in the back we've got the acerina and the little four pack of foxgloves. Here's our snapdragons. Underneath here is um, delphinium cheer blue, which is still germinating, but doesn't want heat. It wants light, but not heat. And actually it's really starting to go now. Every day there's a few more that pop up. So we're doing pretty good on that. Can take that humidity dome off of there soon. This last tray is on the right, that's Salvia argentia, which is one of my must grows every year. I just love that plant and easily spotted because you can see it's little fuzzy leaves. And next to that is Amelia, which is tassel flower. And this one is um, poet something, um, poet's wife, poet something. Um, it is looking chlorotic. This happened last year. I don't know why. I have fertilized these. Um, I don't fully know exactly exactly what's happening there. Uh, you're going to say they look a little dry, and they do. I am trying to be a little bit better about letting things dry out a little bit more before I water them. Because uh, there is only one fungus gnat on that trap, but that has not been the case for everything. Plus, uh, that salvia will not be happy if you overwater it. So... I don't know what the chloro chlorosis is about on these. Hopefully it sort of grows out of it, but I ran into this problem last year. I don't know if it's too if it's too much light for it. I wouldn't think that would be a problem. I don't know. I have to play around with that plant um, a little bit. And then down on the bottom row, um, down here, because I figured this is the um, coolest, down here, the coolest part, closest to the floor, which is where the sweet peas want to be. And the sweet peas are looking fabulous. Let me pull them out. You can see that they're, I mean, they're getting a set of leaves literally every one to two days now. So we are very close to pinching these. I think I will do that actually probably 
maybe even tomorrow or something, but they just look really good. I use the same sweet pea method that I've used in the past, which is, this guy looks a little unhappy. He might need some water. Um, which is to soak them in paper towel to germinate them and then put them uh, in the root drainers here. So those are looking uh, just great. These are just two geraniums that have been overwintering down here. I, this is the one I've been taking cuttings of because it always gets a little rangy. Um, actually, last year I fully regrew it from cuttings. Those are I got rid of the mother plant and that's all just cuttings from last year. Now this next row is more things that are still in the sort of germination phase, kind of. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, all on a heat mat under lights, as you can see. So this first one is a variety of Nicotianas, which have just started germinating. You can see tiny little guys. If you guys know how small Nicotiana seed is, you'll know why there are so many in each cell. It's almost impossible to not overplant those. The next one, this is the foxglove that we're re, retrying. Uh, just started that not too long ago. This is more Nicotiana. All of this is all the perfume lime series. These were all pelleted seeds, I think. So those are sown a little bit more thinly. Those guys look a little damp, actually. And this, this is a problem down here. So this tray was stuff I shouldn't have sewn together clearly because we're in all different phases here. So at the back, looking great, are the celosias. Those are looking just fine. In the middle is China Aster, only of which a few have germinated so far. Uh, and then I've got Swallowtail Fennel, which has germinated right here. You can barely see it. It's the bronze fennel, which has germinated. So. This is becoming a problem because it really shouldn't be on the heat mat anymore. I'm probably going to take it off the heat mat and the rest is going to have to germinate on its own time because, uh, you know, this is, this is a lot of growth and we really don't need it on the heat mat anymore. I do have another heat mat up here. This is what I use for things that don't need light to germinate. I just don't have any of those right at this particular moment. So there's that. And of course, we've got lots of shelves that are not used yet. So I have lots of room to to do things here. So that is the update from seed starting here. That's what I've been doing. Um, I didn't feel like showing you a bunch of videos about how I was doing everything because so much of this is just really repetitive. Um, and I always think it's best if you're going to start a specific seed to either read the seed packets or often the seed packets are a little lacking. So go look it up and just see specifically what it wants in terms of heat or no heat or light or no light and you'll figure it out um, without having to watch a 10 minute video to do it. So uh, this is what's happening. I will keep you updated on how things are going here and uh, hopefully things will grow really well. I really hope that Brazilian fern tree pulls through. All right, have a great day in your garden and we'll see you soon. Bye everybody.